you know what we're up to these days, and I got to tell you, I've, I've done a lot of things, but I have never had anything with this kind of uh, uh, of experience that came across. My gosh, I'm getting letters from all over, and it's around the globe too. So thanks to everybody. But uh, one of the things that want to I want to do first is to read you a few uh, a few letters that did come in, and. Um, uh, some ideas that's even crazier because they uh, they're they're coming up with some really great ideas and that's cool. Mike uh, he, he's a staller in the in the chat room. Mike and Chip uh, K9 MIT and Mike uh, from VE3 MIT uh, great ideas on some things and I appreciate that. They're going to help. Uh, you're going to help us get some parts things together. So we are working on a parts list. I, I, I have so many guys asking me about parts and where do you get them and so on. We're going to get in just a little bit of that in a little bit. But uh, those guys will have a full uh, – they'll have a full run of where we can get it and so on. And uh, we'll, we'll get to that in just a little bit. I had an incredible letter that came from an email that came from – an airplane pilot, Larry, W7LDT, and um, Larry uh, is listening to WTW, so he gets to hear this show as well as my organ concert on Saturday night. Check this out, guys and girls. He said, by trade, I'm an airplane pilot. Yesterday afternoon, I was at 37,000 feet over the Pacific Ocean, 1,700 miles west of L.A. We communicate with air traffic service on HF. The airplane is equipped with two HF radios that are capable of only USB and AM modes. Since I was using HF1, I tuned number two to 5085, selected AM, and there it was. So we don't know who in the world is listening to Ham Nation or my Saturday night programs. I'm getting emails from all over the place on that uh, on Saturday night. Um, Mike Rapp sent in a really nice uh, uh, thing on at K5, uh, KT5MR, and um, he was um, he was telling me how he, there again he's really excited about the project, and how he gave me a couple of ideas. Uh, another one was very interesting from Paul, and we're going to do this in just a little bit. He gave me an idea about making sure that those capacitors are shorted and so on. But then I got another one. This is really cool from Paul, NT7U. He's already got his parts ready to go. He, he's getting there. <laughs> it's just on and on and on. I could be here uh, all night reading these, but I just wanted to sort out a couple of them because it, just, it really warms my heart that all of the time that all of us here uh, at the Twit Network do to make this stuff happen, and boy, everybody's going, yeah. So we're thrilled about that. Well, one of the biggest questions I have is where do I get parts? And we've been – I showed it a couple of times so far, but uh, we're going to go through this again. There's a lot of places that you can buy parts you don't ever let somebody say, oh, you can't buy parts. Yeah, well, you can buy parts. You can get a lot of parts. And uh, one of the reasons you go to ham fest is to find parts. Uh, when people go to the ham fest and go out and look around the flea market, we're looking for stuff, stuff that we can build. There's the main ones right there. Antique electronic supply is really – that's the main one that I see. Gateway electronics, uh, get a – capacitors and stuff. Somebody had written me they couldn't get capacitors. Well, there they are. Uh, Vacuumtubes.com. That's the best place to buy tubes. And then uh, ESRC, vacuumtubes.com. They have all kinds of things. I got those uh, ceramic sockets. I got my uh, sockets you're going to see here in just a couple minutes. Uh, I got all that from them. So there's a lot of places that you can buy parts. And don't forget Mouser. Mouser's got a lot of parts as well as DigiKey, D-I-G-I-K-E-Y, and the Mouser's M-O-U-S-E-R. Go and um, look at their sites, and you'll see what I mean. They're up there. The, the one thing that we talked about 
was, of, of course, trying to figure out what we're doing. <laughs> and uh, we want to do more than just just build all this stuff. But as we go along, we want to let you see and and really understand how this stuff works. Now, I told you a minute ago, we had a really nice thing come in about yeah, there we go. About to safety. Man, I'll tell you, there were so many guys and gals that sent us in uh, things about safety. And so what we wanted to do is to let you, once again, I, I'm not going to fire it all up uh, just due to time restraints. But what we want to do is think about our safety. And remember, CHIP? And MIT came up with this great idea of what we're going to call the chip stick. And then KA7TPH came up with a little modification. So whenever you turn these things on, everything's fine. But when you turn it off, you can even unplug it. Let me tell you, these capacitors, that's what they're supposed to do. They do it well. They'll charge uh, 300 volts and hold it for a long time. You want to make sure you get rid of that. And so what you do is you clip this little guy here. Remember, we built this last week. That's on the ground. And take that, put it up at the B plus point, and just hold it on. And as you saw on the meter, it will discharge and take it all the way to ground. Now, there's one other thing that I got a really nice idea as I read a second ago for you. And this is great. Take a regular clip lead, put it on the ground after, after, <laughs> after you've taken the chip clip and you've got everything all discharged and uh, go up here. And, and while you're working on it or just letting it sit around, do that. And there's no problem with that voltage coming back to you. It's very important. Because we're dealing with 300 volts there, and we're not going to use all of that. Uh, we're going to have some dropping resistors and stuff like that for the rest of it. Now, here's a very important thing. If you haven't been listening, listen. This is very, very important. International Crystal has been the, the place ever since I got in this hobby. The crystal down there in that 1956 Harvey Wells I bought in 1956 from them. They are closing. I don't know what we're going to do, but I'm telling you what to do. I would do it immediately. I did it again this week. I'll go out and order your crystals for this project. Uh, I bought, uh, what you want is, this is the catalog. And what that tells them is it's a 25C holder at eight puffs, and that's the frequency of the crystal, but then they grind it down to 3885. So take all of this information down and call them. None of this email crap. Call them. <laughs> you have a telephone. <laughs> call them. I know you can go in there and die. no, no, don't do that. Call them. 800-725-1426 for those that's listening on podcast. International Crystals in Oklahoma. 800 800- 725-1426. Call them and tell them that you want the crystals for the Pine Board project. You probably know what, you, what you're looking for, but there's all the numbers to give them. You want the frequency of 3.885, 75 meters, 3.885. I would buy a 40-meter crystal also, 7.290. And... Uh, we don't know where it's going, uh, could continue on. We don't know. <clears throat> I'm just telling you <clears throat> that they are going out of business. Wow, sad is this. Hopefully somebody will pick it up somewhere. But in the meantime, if we get going here in this project, you won't have a crystal. So I would advise you to buy the crystals. <clears throat> They'll never go bad, and you use them in all kinds of other projects also. What's going to happen next and I've started to work on it, it's going to be the mic preamp. The mic preamp is going to be made up, of, and, and I'm not sure yet, because I'm still experimenting with this, if we're going to do it with one 12AX7 or two. 
because I'm thinking about doing a, a preamp with a little bit of equalization. You know how important equalization is. And so what we want to maybe do is uh, do a, another one and I'll, I'll build it. Hey, that's what this is all about. Do both of them. <laughs> you, it's all modular, isn't it? So do, uh, do the other one. And the, the second one is going to look like this. This is the one with the equalization in it. And maybe we can do that one. I can guarantee you I'll have both of them. But you just connect a couple of wires on the front, a couple of wires on the back, and bingo, you can go either way. But um, I'll, uh, I'll have more about that in the in next week or two. Uh, this one's very special. It's got a, a transformer balanced input for uh, XLR balanced microphone like the PR40 or PR22, PR20, any kind of balanced. That's how that works. For unbalanced dynamics, it'll go in here. And the 12AX7 uh, is going to be the first stage preamp. But then here's all the equalization. That's how we're going to do it. Treble, bass, and mid, three band. And we'll have a bright switch also. That, these are this thing I'm dreaming about. So uh, what you do next is you put it together and listen to it. Hook it up to an amplifier and talk in a microphone see if you like it. You can change things around. That's what this is all about, everybody. You're going to build it. It's yours. Here's another one I, I got. And it's very simple, very simple. And so that might work also. And there again, we might build all three of them. I don't know. All I can tell you is we're going to do something. We're going to build something and it's going to work. <laughs> uh, I've already collected a few parts and I'll show you what's going on here. This is kind of fun. Um, I got the board. Well, I think I told you that last time we, no, no, no time before me. I had the boards made up. I cut the boards out and got them all prettied up with some uh, some stuff. Uh, I'm not happy with this. I, I'll probably cut this in half. I don't know. But that, there again, this is what all this is about. Uh, the preamp will have either one or two 12AX7s. It will have uh, that potentiometer. If we do the other uh, uh, with equalization... Maybe I'll put it all – I haven't figured it out yet. But you see, this is how you start. You lay it out and figure out from the schematic where we're going to go. And um, that is so important when you're uh, at this stage trying to figure out where everything's going to go. And boy, it's easy on pine board. If you have metal, oh, buddy, <laughs> yeah. You're cutting and chomping and drilling and uh, so it gets to be a very, very uh, a convoluted making it all happen. But uh, I just love doing some of this stuff and I'm just I'm enamored that you guys and gals are showing me such incredible response. I mean, it's not one or two. It's probably over this week time a pretty close to 100 and I just picked out a couple because I I want you to know these are real people that's uh, very involved in what we're doing, and uh, uh, so we want to we want to make sure we uh, we get our tubes. Uh, I forgot to show you this is the 12 AX7 that I got from Mike, and um, and this is what we're going to be doing right here. This little guy. See, there's two tubes in there. I don't know if you can see that, but there's two halves. There's two actual tubes in there. It's like two 6C4s. Well, it's a 12AX7. has a lot of gain. The transmitter tube is a 12AU7. Looks just like it. Doesn't have quite as much gain. So that's how we do it. And um, those are things you might want to go ahead and acquire. A 12AX7 and a 12AU7. We know we're going to use them. 12AU7 is going to be the transmitter. So there you go. Um, I also, I, I showed you this. I didn't talk about it. A-M phone net. A-M-F-O-N-E. Phone is with an F. A-M phone dot net. This is a billboard. Like it's just all kinds of great things there. And uh, you want to go check into that. You have, see what's going on. And um, next week, we're going to have uh, the information, the full information, 
from Clark Burgard. He's coming on because April the 1st is not April Fool's Day when it comes to AM. There's a huge event coming up. It's an amateur radio special event for AM operation. And even though you have uh, sideband rigs, almost every one of them are great on AM. And we're going to show you next week how to do that. Here's all the stuff that we'll be talking about. So don't miss all that. The AM rally, it's going to be on Saturday, April the 1st. And um, I guarantee you, I will be there along with a lot of others because AM has really blown up. I, uh, I'm really thrilled because I've been working AM all my life and kind of went in the doldrums during the uh, 2000 all the way up through but i'll tell you what the last four or five years wow and we have to respect the am window a lot of people don't know about this it was formed back in the 50s i was a young chap and i was in the middle of all that i was there watching listening to it happen i didn't have anything to do with it but i i knew what happened and the, the sideband started in and taken over the frequencies, and it was just a war. So what they did, they sat down at the table and said, okay, gentlemen's agreement, AM window on 75 is 3870 to 3890. Just keep your sideband and CW and uh, whatever out of there. It's reserved for the AM. Now, you see, you can only get four or five contacts in there on AM. I thought it was very generous of the AM community to do that because the sidebanders, you've got hundreds of frequencies on the rest of the band. 40 meters, it's 7290 to 7295. We only have two frequencies. But please observe that. Please spread that word. 3870 to 3890 because you are going to be right in the middle of that with some of this having all kinds of fun. <laughs> 